Good morning, uh, my friends. I think we can start the discussion panel of the um, second day of our assembly. My name is Anastasia Platonova, independent cultural journalist. I have the honor to uh, lead the, uh, this panel. I will focus on museums and state institutions in uh, war time. And I think we should talk about uh, the museum institutions for a number of reasons. Um, because museums, since the beginning of the uh, full-scale invasion, um, they were um, they had faced the very same situation as any other institutions. But um, there are many other um, aspects that we might not consider um, obvious. And um, the scope of challenges and losses uh, every single day is um, quite quite massive. Uh, museums um, are tasked with a really difficult um, challenge of uh, preserving Ukrainian culture. And the war um, has put uh, museums in a very difficult mode. Uh, today we're going to try to um, describe uh, how museums uh, work. I have the honor to <coughs> introduce the speakers. Um, the deputy um, manager of um, uh, National uh, Alexander Dovzhenko Film Center in Kiev, Olena Horanchuk, a general director of Mestetsky Arsenal National Art and Culture Museum Complex in Kiev, Olesia Ostrovska Luta, um, Olga Novika, the Bogdan Varvara Kanenko National Museum of Arts general manager. Uh, and uh, PhD of Unif the, uh, University of Oxford in the UK, Olena Czerwonik. I wanted to start with a small reality check so that we could talk, uh, make a small introduction speech on how your institutions, your teams, uh, survived the first th nine uh, full-scale invasion and the war, how uh, your exhibition uh, practice looked like. And obviously we'll talk about um, threats, but also insights and challenges and um, conclusions. Uh, please, could you, could you start? Good morning, everybody. First and foremost, I wanted to thank uh, the organizers of this conference and the Ukrainian um, Institute, especially Simon, and everybody who uh, did their job to, to make this uh, today's event happen. And obviously, I'm, I would like to thank uh, Ukrainian armed forces so that we're alive and we can uh, work and discuss today. I wanted to share my own um, experience um, with uh, our colleagues and the public of our museum, with people who uh, who's abroad, who left in Kyiv, who, um, who came back as well. Uh, it's a lot of uh, stories. Our schedules uh, are really tight, have become really, really tight since the beginning of the war, and the programs that were prepared uh, in the pre-war times uh, that uh, were prepared in weeks, now we're, we're preparing them in days. I think you will all agree that uh, all activities of the museums are connected with um, personal feelings because the museum for us is uh, something constant. Uh, it is a kind of a shelter uh, where you go to in order to feel some kind of um, security and stability. I wanted to say that um, any preparatory work um, to uh, any possible um, invasion in the museum uh, took place. Uh, we were considering what would uh, we do if this uh, uh, invasion happened, uh, how to secure uh, and um, how to secure our collections, wh what kind of actions to, to take. But on February 24th, and we understood it, it is impossible really to prepare for such a thing. Um, 
obviously on this day uh, after the first um, um, explosions um, we uh, gathered together and started to uh, talk about how to um, how to uh, preserve the collections how to guarantee safety but part of our colleagues since the first days of uh, of March um, spent whole days in, 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 in the museum. Myself, I managed to join them in, in April. Um, so first and foremost, we decided to preserve the collections. That was our priority. And indeed, it is a kind of a therapeutic effect for us. And we are thankful to our German partners who sent us a huge uh, truck with uh, materials uh, to help us pack um, the collections. So you cannot imagine uh, how we were um, really stoked about going to work to uh, pack uh, collections. It was really our uh, priority and we were um, very emotional about it. Um, there was even a video um, of myself as I was packing uh, some China plates, and uh, sorry, China um, uh, figurines. And obviously, uh, packing was not the only task we uh, we had on our hands. Uh, for everybody who stayed in Kyiv, uh, there is a master class for, um, for everybody who wants to, to join us and help us uh, to pack um, uh, the collections. So everybody is, is welcome. You can uh, come to the museum and uh, actually see how the process uh, of packing looks like. Uh, the history of, of an empty museum is what is most impressed, what Im impressed our colleagues the most uh, f uh, from uh, colleagues from uh, from abroad. Uh, they even uh, in Do Dortmund they organized a uh, photo exhibition. Uh, our German colleagues um, were considering exploring the idea of, of a museum without any collections, how it can continue operating. Um, some of my colleagues uh, connected and not connected with um, cultural institutions, they were asking me, what are you doing um, right now um, apart from um, securing the collections? Obviously, uh, there is a, a constant deja vu effect because many institutions um, many Ukrainian institutions um, have not been experiencing the war for the first time. We have had uh, the experience of war previously. Um, for example, the Second World War, um, we still have people who, um, uh, who, who, who remember their experience of the Second World War. So within the past nine months, we have been reliving, uh, in a way, um, uh, the past. The reliving uh, their experience, and we actually have been um, uh, also learning about their experience of um, uh, how of preserving uh, museums in wartime of the Second World War and. Uh, this is exactly what we want to do. We also want to um, s uh, leave some um, memory, leave some, 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 some mark in the archives about how we preserved uh, museum collections in the, the, the wartime of 2022. Uh, the next few slides will show what we actually did within uh, uh, the past summer. One of the interesting um, educational events uh, was um, the museum courtyard. I can say that uh, what was most interesting for our public, uh, for our audience who uh, came to our museum, is the feeling of shelter. Uh, they wanted to feel some kind of stability. This was a, an area of freedom where people could um, come uh, on the weekend and rest, drink some coffee, uh, listen to, um, go on a walk. Uh, because we were uh, walking down some streets, um, starting and ending um, in the museum. Uh, w uh, these were guided tours, um, along with um, experimental music. So we created kind of a uh, kind of a hub, uh, thanks to um, 
uh, thanks to our um, uh, neighbors, we were able to work with uh, with an ins institution called uh, Squads 17B. Uh, and um, together with them, we created a kind of a partnership um, because over the fence we could uh, work with them. Moving on, um, I wanted to uh, say that we had another interesting initiative um, uh, together with an uh, Odessa Museum. It's a demonstration of our museum during the war. It's, uh, it's a tour of the empty halls of the museum called uh, Shadows and Walls. Uh, we're talking about the architecture, history, biography of the people connected with the museum. Obviously, uh, the main person of this uh, masterclass was the museum and its walls, uh, let's say, could talk and tell some stories. Uh, you probably know about these exhibition projects in our museum. I'm not going to uh, stop longer on this one because we'll continue uh, talking about the details. So I'm just clicking through my presentation and just to give you a glance. Uh, and here I wanted to stay a bit longer and talk about longer. I was talking about uh, some territory of freedom and uh, peace. I was actively talking about this uh, on the 9th of um, October and I was talking uh, about um, the, the peaceful walls of the museum but unfortunately I, I lied to them uh, because if they look at, um, uh, at these photos on the 10th of October uh, there was a huge airstrike, a uh, huge Russian airstrike and on Friday um, Uh, in the 40s, we had a very similar uh, airstrike which uh, damaged our museum as well, which is quite uh, symbolic and this is the déjà vu effect I'm, uh, I mentioned in the first place. Uh, so there was a... Um, um, although we were in... Uh, Kiev is not occupied, uh, we still f uh, faced such uh, a similar uh, experience. Uh, so you can see uh, part of... Uh, uh, part of uh, of the museum was damaged, so um, the windows were, were broken, and I just couldn't imagine that that um, inside the museum there could be so much glass because all the glass, as you can see, uh, was was broken and uh, fell inside the uh, the museum. Uh, everybody joined us and helped us in, um, in 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 bringing everything in order, in cleaning up uh, the the glass. Uh, you can see uh, the famous um, uh, hole in uh, in the street, but right now, um, fortunately, it uh, it was cleaned and the the street is um, uh, is whole. Uh, everything is repaired, and it's amazing how quick these works um, are are being carried out. Um, here is a really crucial moment because the museum, uh, which seemed to be a very safe place, uh, stopped to be so. Uh, you know, it's it's a huge blow. Uh, it's really hard to uh, recreate these mechanisms to create the uh, the histories and to continue our work. My last word uh, in the context of my um, of my uh, speech, I wanted to uh, stop pause at this moment. Um, uh, there is um, um, there was a training on providing first aid um, on um, the volunteer uh, within the volunteer activity in a volunteer community is Graya. Uh, we were showing how to help um, uh, people in 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 extreme situations, how to um, uh, help them in in uh, in emergency. Uh, situations. This this photo shows a very emotional state uh, of us, everybody, because every um, all the day long uh, we are in 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 a very stressful situation because we don't know what's going to happen next, and uh, we're not only concerned with cons uh, conserving and preserving uh, our collections, but also um, the constant threat of what can uh, happen in a moment. Uh, thanks a lot, Ola. And I think that we are going to uh, touch upon the uh, layers that you discussed before, once again. 
But I think that your speech presented a lot of challenges and changes in museum institutions of Ukraine, uh, and uh, it, we should talk about them. Uh, please uh, let these slides remain on the screen uh, for better understanding of the emotions. Uh, please uh, let's speak about the experience uh, of uh, Art Arsenal uh, and specifically about your experience. Uh, present also your inclusions, your insights uh, for your team for these last months. Thanks a lot and it's very interesting to listen to what you're talking about and I think uh, that the experience uh, that uh, my colleagues uh, shared yesterday, um, my colleagues from uh, non-governmental sector and our governmental public sector, our experiences are very similar. Of course, um, there are details uh, where we are differ, where, where we differ, but basically we are going through very similar things. And so uh, we are playing more or less similar roles. Thinking about what is going on with all of us, I reminded uh, that in March I wrote an essay and it was uh, publicized only on Facebook because I, did I just did not have energy to promote it anywhere else. Yes, Facebook remains one of the main uh, media for Ukrainians. Yes, and uh, throughout the whole March, I reminded so many scenes from my childhood. And at some point, I realized how we look at elderly people, at people who do not remember abruptly what happened to them tomorrow or yesterday, but still they believe very well some very, very uh, distant scenes. And therefore, I just started recalling the scenes from my childhood in March, uh, and they were so vivid to me. And I thought that maybe such things happen when people or institutions face a wall of insecurity, and this wall is so close. Everyone who was in Kyiv in March was uh, in total insecurity. And every, uh, every time we woke up in the morning, we actually were not sure if we are going to be alive due, uh, by the end of the day. And as a result of that, we felt that there, is, uh, that there was a wall in front of us. And so sometimes we felt like having this wall so close to us, in the same way like elderly people, they think that they do not have very long future. The future is so close. And what it meant for our institutions, our institutions, they are all related to our past, even as such institutions as Art Arsenal and uh, the Tovshenka Center of the 20th century, because your building is uh, very modern. But partly uh, our work relates to the past and also it relates to the future. Because we should be sort of a way to uh, present future to people. So in order to present this future to people, we have to make enormous efforts now. And it's, it doesn't uh, work automatically anymore. Uh, and therefore, we just immerse into the past to avoid this. And so uh, when, while thinking about that, I realized that we have a few missions. First of all, we have to preserve our heritage in physical sense. And it should just survive. The second mission, we have to uh, voice the opinions of Ukrainian culture so uh, that as many people as possible in the world would know what is going on uh, in Ukraine, uh, also with culture. The third mission, is that uh, you are doing something uh, uh, to help people be stable, be in good condition. And I think that uh, at the moment, uh, also literally, our mission is to help people overcome 
this very proximate horizon and uh, think, realize what's going on. A few days ago, we opened such an exhibition that presents the relationships uh, among people in Ukraine uh, in the conditions of insecurity, of instability, when we have so many threats uh, of food shortage, of uh, and actually it's uh, very uh, in unusual for us because we realized that basically Ukraine plays such an enormous role in food safety of the whole world and therefore we are trying to rethink and we are trying to make some theoretical thoughts even when it's so difficult. Uh, and I think that every uh, institution has a very proximate, very close horizon, uh, horizon at the moment, but uh, still we are working. And <coughs> uh, yesterday I heard a few thoughts about physical presence, physical space. And I think that uh, when we are looking from the perspective of Kyiv, because we were uh, on the siege at the moment at s some point, and so physical presence of people in the city had two dimensions. The first meaning was, the uh, first dimension was sort of uh, physical presence. Uh, and the most uh, radical uh, example is President Zelensky, who did not leave the country. And therefore, we realized that our uh, country remained integral. Yeah, he was an example. Um, and so we had to be an example as an institution for someone to show, to demonstrate that we are there, that we preserve the institutionality in this area, in this city. And the second point is we were trying to preserve the sense of citizenship because it is so important when authorities, officials state that they do not leave the country, they do not flee from the country, because they are, uh, want to stay here and to preserve the institutions and the fabric, uh, the fabrics of the city. But there is sort of a benchmark of a border of stability, of resilience. We had so many requests from foreign agencies and they asked us, why are you staying in Kyiv? And the journalists who asked me about this, because maybe they wanted uh, me to say something like, I'm defending my motherland or something like that, but I could not say anything like that uh, because on the one hand, I realized all my obligations, I realized what I should do, but I uh, did not realize what is the border of my fragility. Uh, because we realize when this border was only after it is over. And therefore, it's so difficult to answer this question, because this border can be crossed at any moment. And this is and so quite often you realize that it is happening at this very moment. So physically, on the one hand, physical presence helps to preserve institutionality, the sense of citizenship. But at the same time, it is com constantly under pressure of a uh, border of s uh, fragility, of resilience, about which you never know when it is over. Uh, thanks a lot for your very sincere uh, thoughts and for your sincere experience. And we are very happy that Art Arsenal remains to be an example for many institutions. Uh, Alan, I would like to ask you to ask about your experience in the Ruzhenka Center. You have many more challenges um, than other institutions. Yes, we were lucky enough to have so many challenges. Yes, I would first of all like to thank to all of those who made this meeting possible. It is so nice to feel your physical presence. Even when we are in Kyiv, we do not feel each other's uh, physical presence. But here, Ukrainians met uh, with each other and with the uh, international partners, so it's very nice for all of us to meet here. 
and uh, I would like to share my global uh, observation and um, nobody heard uh, from me about that. Yeah, so it will be an exclusive um, sharing of thoughts. Yes, basically we have very strange relations with time. On the one hand, we realize that we just do not have time. So much work is not, uh, has not been done. Whole tasks have not been completed. Uh, I'm in a hurry and I do not have time to uh, somehow catch up with everything. And we have just lost our time and that's all. Everything what is going on, everything is sort of uh, limitless. It doesn't have limits and one event happened and it proved to me that uh, it is a s a sort of a scenario from above. Uh, when we had a, d a, city, a day of city of Kyiv, we decided to host uh, an event, multidisciplinary event, a Kyiv 450. Uh, 450 in military language means everything's okay, everything's quiet. And so we uh, conducted this two days event. Um, and uh, within this event, uh, we presented some uh, lectures, uh, we showed some uh, videos, and Kyiv citizens uh, also uh, shared their experience about uh, leaving Kyiv and coming back. And then we also had a performance of uh, Hezeve Band. Uh, they started with a Chernobyevka song. Uh, it should have been mm, a provocative performance. We were looking for some mm, ballet uh, curts for them because they wanted to make a provocative performance. From Lviv, uh, we, mm, a pig uh, blood was brought. Uh, and so evening starts, a song uh, starts, no air uh, raid uh, alar alarms um, during the whole day. Um, one of the performers just uh, starting, uh, starts pouring uh, blood on himself and then the sirens start. And uh, at first we asked everyone uh, to uh, just leave the premises and go outside and uh, everyone was so uh, dissatisfied, so everyone was disappointed, Hasewe went outside uh, just to uh, bow down and uh, before uh, the audience, and unfortunately we had to say farewell to this bloody ballet. And I realized, and uh, children and people started singing the hymn of Ukraine on the street. So it was sort of uh, a sign for us that the time uh, is there, and we just have to trust this time. And a very similar situation happened in Museum Hanenkiv. Uh, one week before this terrible strike, we had a possibility to visit the opera performance and uh, museum was presented in totally different way. We are so impressed. Uh, museum became so open, so new to us. And we have never imagined that uh, such things can happen in museum. And this strike put sort of a dot brought some sort of a breakthrough. So s this is sort of interpretation uh, of our own, but I see some sort of a uh, wheel from above in everything uh, like this. So I saw that uh, I, uh, when I became a head of the Dovchenko Center, I saw some logical events that happened. And we uh, sometimes, if someone starts something, we have to finish it. And uh, we have to finish someone's home task. For 30 years of Ukraine's independence, Ukraine, and, uh, Ukraine has not done everything to um, counteract uh, this invasion. And therefore, 
also cultural invasion. And therefore, from the first days, my personal priority was uh, I did not tell to my colleagues that they have to leave Ukraine or they are obliged to stay here, but the priority was to say that you are the most important. Uh, you are the carriers of memory, and you are uh, you people are grain from Ukraine, and uh, because uh, you are sort of a cultural seed, and so it was very important to preserve people, uh, so that under no circumstances all those people who are left uh, in the country are going to die, and so fortunately. Uh, our whole team survived, nobody left us, and except for two people who are living abroad at the moment, our whole team was preserved. And from the first days, because the uh, movies in a digital form uh, is quite dynamic and uh, it can cross the borders so easily, and we were lucky enough because we had power supply and internet, we proposed to and uh, a lot of uh, cinema agencies contacted us because they wanted Ukrainian movies uh, to have because they wanted to emphasize Ukraine's voice abroad. And so it was very symbolic for me because uh, at 12 o'clock on the 24th of uh, um, uh, February, FIAF, the World uh, Cinema Agency contacted Association contacted us and they told us that they are ready to support us and provide us any support we need. In a week, uh, we realized uh, some uh, we, we received some information from our authorities that uh, we have to optimize our uh, optimize our costs uh, reduce our costs and so on not to, to put pressure on the state's budget but uh, we um, didn't receive that much help from them and all I mentioned that what are you doing except for preserving the heritage and I can say, if that's not enough, isn't it our main work? It doesn't mean that we are just sitting and thinking, if an enemy comes, I'm going to lie down and uh, uh, enemies won't uh, cross uh, and pass uh, into our building. But uh, preserving this heritage, its contacts, um, these are contacts with our partners. This is communication with so many people. This is also information about the collection, collections. So first of all, we are obliged to demonstrate our presence in information area, uh, uh, so to uh, say, justify our existence. And for many of us, we just cannot uh, do any other way. We want to be heard, we want to be, uh, people to listen to us, we want to be uh, appreciated. And so any challenge we have, I uh, see as something organic, although, of course, I would like those challenges not to exist. Uh, thanks a lot for your wonderful conclusions. And we are moving to the subjects that the speakers started talking about, the uh, conclusions and practices and I would like to come back about uh, what Lesia mentioned, uh, the importance of physical presence and uh, about things that Elena Koncheruk mentioned uh, about preservation on different levels. Uh, and uh, directors of museum institutions uh, cannot say to us not about everything, because uh, there are so many aspects uh, during the war that they cannot share. But I would like to ask about preservation on a key level. And it is a very big challenge to Ukrainian museum institutions. Uh, please share with us your insights about preservation of buildings, your collections. You started mentioning about this. 
of course, we won't speak about what you have created and what you did not evacuate, but please uh, share with us your survival practices and how do you think what are uh, what survival practices are the most productive for you because the war is going on and we still have these challenges. And in the context of preservation, for example, uh, we now having a dark and cold winter, so we have a new ch layer of challenges. So let's speak about this level. Yesterday, I wanted to add, listening to other uh, colleagues, we talked with Alona Karavai, if, if you remember, uh, during the round table, uh, or rather maybe a panel discussion. Uh, there was a thought that uh, horizontal, the horizontal aspect is a modus vivendi for peaceful times. In difficult times, the hierarchy does matter. At first, when I heard it, I thought my experience is completely contrary. Um, the horizontal aspect was uh, really helpful, but maybe after this winter, I may have actually different um, conclusions. We are in the process, so, so it may change. Now I'm talking um, of my current experience, but when, you know, following this line of thought, I think it's not about uh, the it's not about um, the horizontal aspect or, or vertical one, but about the measure, about the scale. So what really helps is ma uh, maximal uh, number of m most um, m m most decisions are made on the level of a small number of people in small teams that you don't need to consult with uh, with me or other managers. It's uh, really simple decisions. Um, like uh, drawing up a, um, a, a, a schedule. Um, it's very, very, very easy to um, to make such decisions for like five people rather than for, for 100 people. Um, so this remains to the discretion of uh, a, a small unit. Many decisions like this are made. I just wanted to to talk about this. But on the other hand, there are several parameters that make this uh, hor the, the, the horizontal aspect, uh, well, effective. Let's say it is effective, that it's productive. Uh, it is time. So the small teams, they know how much time they have on their hands, which means that within some time, a decision needs to be made. You know, the. And second, if a decision um, is unable to be made, um, the team just needs to uh, to understand this, that this person, knowing how much time they have, they need to take this decision. And it works really well in a situation of crisis. Uh, another thing which uh, has been discussed quite a lot uh, so far is uh, the the exchange of roles. So when one, uh, some, some people can um, take over the responsibilities of others uh, because you don't know how fragile people can be. Um, even more, it's not a linear process. It can go up, it can go down. A person can be in a different uh, state. Uh, they can um, recover after stress. So it's a, it's, 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 it's an, it's a dynamic process. Uh, and you cannot uh, predict uh, how it's going to happen. So you know, um, you know, colleagues need to be ready and take up the slack for you when need comes. Uh, for example, out of 100 people, uh, somebody can uh, can support you when when you're down. Uh, in Arsenal, uh, about half to three quarters of, of the team uh, remained and continued working. So, so this is our experience. Uh, thirdly, is the skills in, uh, we, we, we don't work uh, in departments. We, uh, our teams are interdisciplinary and 
cross uh, sectoral. So uh, it means that uh, our colleagues, they know uh, how professional and know the, the scope of responsibility of colleagues from, from, from other um, departments. So when they know that, uh, let's say, team A cannot do a certain thing, then team B can, can support them maybe you know, in, in, in longer uh, time period, uh, but still the job gets done. Uh, simply speaking, it, it really helps, and this is our experience. Thank you, Les uh, Alessia. I wanted to just state that, indeed, the experience of flexible, um, small and dispersed uh, team of uh, cultural institutions proves to be really effective, especially in uh, circumstances when um, institutions face unbelievable, unimaginable uh, responsibility. I will tell you that it's really uh, the, the, the the scale of the responsibilities is 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 just um, humongous. Uh, a, a, an average person uh, would not withstand such pressure. Uh, some institutions uh, cannot serve as a partner. Um, Uh, unfortunately, the Ministry of Culture, at the beginning of the full-scale uh, invasion, failed to support the preservation of uh, collections in museums. I really need to voice this opinion. Uh, so uh, the huge, um, uh, huge uh, hats down to you because uh, you've, you're doing a really great job. Because you took up this this burden. Uh, this idea really resonates with me. Uh, it sounds like a. Uh, uh, that in such circumstances, it is really difficult to um, to plan anything. In Dovzhenko Center, uh, we worked twice, three times as much uh, in order to continue um, our work because we were not dealing with uh, the Russian aggression, but also with, uh, in terms of uh, the Dovzhenko Museum, um, we also had... Um, we were, let's say, invaded by um, one institution under the uh, the ministry. Uh, they have been misusing the um, the prerogatives um, vested in them by the by the ministry. But our um, connections with this institution, uh, Derskino, which is, uh, I believe, a um, uh, a government um, institution dealing with um, with the cinema uh, are really tight, and it really puts a damper on uh, our institution. And the whole team needs to be uh, involved in this cooperation. So, speaking of what we needed in uh, the circumstances of reacting to war threats, is actually minimizing other uh, burden. Uh, work um, from uh, uh, imposed on us by other institutions. Uh, right now, we're fighting for the preservation of our collections. Um, so this is our main um, uh, main focus, uh, and we're dealing on on many levels with this issue, uh, on the legal uh, level as well. Uh, our team is is uh, extremely personally involved in in the preservations. Um, an amazing um, an amazing part of uh, of the resources is is actually burnt on um, on not only preservation uh, the collections but also the um, the the other dealings with uh, with external uh, institutions. The situation in in our country is not catastrophic. Is so catastrophic that we do not, uh, we cannot enjoy uh, enough sufficient um, financial support, so that the people who work in the team, because they do not have the uh, the luxury of, um, you know, selling um, selling their works like f uh, uh, photographs or sculptures. Th th they receive uh, financing from. 
from the government so that the uh, so that people um, are familiarized with um, with works of art but they cannot sell them to to the public uh, so the f our first uh, and foremost task is the preservation of uh, of artworks but uh, w uh, we we are uh, tasked with other uh, responsibilities as, as well. Uh, we need to find uh, power genera uh, generators, uh, so there is a lot of infrastructural uh, challenges as well. Um, since the beginning of uh, of, uh, of the full scale inv invasion, uh, there was one person who really helped us. Uh, uh, Sasha Kovalchuk um, helped us organize everything. Um, the Odessa uh, Museum is uh, present with us online. Um, Kirill Lipatov wanted to join us online, but uh, it didn't work, unfortunately. But I will talk about uh, his experience because it's really important. Um, I wanted to move on to the level of threat and, and uh, preservation. Um, and let's talk about the, the connection with, uh, with the government. Uh, which is really, really difficult sometimes, uh, because institutions um, also are, are, are tasked with the preservation of uh, the institutions themselves, uh, and they need to um, uh, devote a lot of resources uh, for this uh, uh, for this purpose. And uh, there is no exaggeration uh, that their work is is uh, immeasurable. Uh, what Elena has said on uh, the, the crisis uh, in the situation in, in the Dovzhenko uh, Center. The situation is connected with the reorganizing uh, the Dovzhenko Center on the part of, uh, of, um, of the government and its agency, uh, cinema agency. This so-called reorganization will lead to the destruction of one of the most successful Ukrainian multidisciplinary institutions a key institution uh, on the preservation of the um, cinematic heritage. Uh, we cannot let this happen, and indeed, we are in a situation where we need we we, we are forced to force the uh, the state, uh, the government, to uh, to listen to us, and we need together uh, to save the institution in the post Maidan uh, period. We'll get back to this uh, issue. And uh, I know that we're jumping from one uh, topic to another, but um, uh, I wanted to, to pass the floor um, to you. Uh, thank you for giving me the, uh, the floor. Uh, I wanted to explain uh, why I'm here in, in this panel, because I'm the only person who is not a manager of a, of a, of a governmental institution or of a museum or, uh, or any other. So I'm, I'm when it comes to the Ukraine context, I started uh, working in, in Ukraine in isolation in 2011 uh, in, in the uh, Isolatia uh, institution. I will not talk about this institution in length because it was done uh, yesterday. I worked in Isolatia with Ukrainian contexts and Ukrainian artists, a lot of people here present that I see went through uh, the Isolatia um, group. Uh, you took part in our uh, exhibitions, for example. And as you know, uh, Isolatia in, in, in Donetsk uh, was uh, suspended in uh, 2014, unfortunately. And I was in uh, Donetsk uh, in the spring of 2014 when the city was captured, when uh, the city was the, the airport was bombarded, and uh, I was there when it happened. Uh, back then, uh, our team uh, needed to be evacuated. Our staff need to be evacuated as well. I'm not sure even if, if even the word um, evacuation uh, is good for this uh, for this case because evacuation is something you do before a crisis situation. But we were evacuating our staff uh, under the the fire of Kalashnikovs. We were evacuating what um, the Russian army allowed us, actually. Um, in essence, uh, war started not on February 24th, but in 2014. In 
it's interesting that 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 in Ukraine nobody is speaking what was lost in 2014 by uh, our our heritage, uh, our cultural funds. What is happening uh, with museums in 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 Luhansk, in in Donetsk? Uh, we don't know if if these collections are there or they were uh, robbed by by by, by the Russians. Um, in 2022, we see that our um, um, government institutions, uh, Ministry of Culture, was not really ready to uh, possibly uh, preserve uh, our heritage. Uh, and for example, in cities like Mariupol, Kherson, Hers uh, we don't know what is really happening uh, in, 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 in these cities. Uh, sorry for interrupting, but I wanted just to say that to dive even deeper in this history, uh, this question is the question of continuity, because in 2014-15, the Ministry of Culture, uh, I'm not really fond of this um, institution, a lot of was made. Uh, actually, um, uh, Olesya ostrowska uh, was the uh, deputy of the, uh, uh, of the Minister of the uh, of the ministry, the, the museum was uh, at the time uh, in the process of construction. So it's the question of institutional continuity. So I just wanted to uh, make this remark. Please continue. Briefly, uh, on the 9th of June, we were. Uh, we were, um, uh, we fled from our territory and we were sitting in some buildings in Padilla and we were ju just, we could not just imagine how we are going to survive, how we are going to work in future. We had our team, but uh, does it have any sense to pr um, work like this in future? Isolation was very specific in Donetsk. We have not brought anything from uh, Outside, we worked only with uh, social, economic, cultural things that we had in place. So actually, we lost our sense of existence. So um, s we started thinking probably we should be a nomadic organization. But I think it was sort of an utopic dream. It's sort of a uh, very cool wor word, uh, nomadic, but when you lose uh, your house, your accommodation, your um, social ties, uh, your job, this uh, <coughs> cool word doesn't mean anything to you. And uh, recently, uh, and so I started working with the uh, Kharkiv School of uh, Photography that was presented by Sasha yesterday. Then again, deja vu. The same story uh, of invasion. We again have to uh, save our collection. Isolation and Kharkiv School of Photography. Uh, these are not state institutions, so we were quite dynamic. We, uh, were, we managed to do what was necessary. We were able to evacuate uh, the collections with the help of our German colleagues who uh, helped us in transportation. And now we are trying to pitch this collection uh, in some places abroad. And so, because physically this collection is abroad at the moment, and therefore we uh, try to promote our photographies, our uh, objects. I can share with you uh, in what way we uh, build, establish relations with some institutions. I'm in Great Britain now, and, and I'm also contacting some British institutions and try to convince them that they, uh, it is worth organizing an exhibition with Ukrainian photos. But okay, let's uh, let's uh, stop here for a moment. But we will uh, we will g uh, come back to your um, story. Uh, can um, I don't know uh, what aspect of uh, our talks uh, do you want to share in your talk, but. Um, 
And probably you can share your experience with public institutions because it is very interesting, uh, especially in the context of Museum Hanenkiv. Um, it is uh, a municipal museum, so uh, it is directed uh, by a municipal uh, direct rate of culture, but the Department of Culture left uh, her, um, one of uh, people from the department of position left uh, the position and it was unknown who was in charge and therefore you had quite a lot of complications so can you share your experience first of all i would like to say from the optimistic uh, point of view i would like to first of all thank uh, and give thanks of course it is terrible that war happened and therefore we had to uh, find new ties, new connections due to the war, but basically it's a matter of uh, responsibility, of readiness to take responsibility. And so Yulia Vaganova and all those people who were in museum from the very first day of invasion took this responsibility on themselves. And so we are very grateful to our colleagues, to our Western partners who helped us um, in this. We are very grateful to our colleagues from Arsenal and to Misolesia because a lot of these projects, uh, including grant applications, uh, in order to get uh, the f funding uh, to preserve collections, to, uh, co to, to somehow physically protect our collections, we were able to do this due to the support and help that we received. And so we started establishing connections, ties, first on local level, and uh, uh, this human aspect uh, helped us survive and be still be integral. We'll still have our windows, and it's a strategic optimism. <laughs> and we can say, that our colleagues from Arsenal, the moment they uh, help us create procedures, how to optimize the uh, project activities, how can we distribute the roles. It is also very important that our colleagues mentioned because we uh, redistribute um, our roles, our responsibilities, and it's a big challenge to all of us. From the first, uh, uh, from the first days of war, uh, we uh, started joking that uh, we uh, have, um, we are doing ten and a half jobs in our museum because we uh, did our job and we did the job of so many other people uh, who left the country or who had to be relocated, and. And it is very important to uh, do this work instead of someone because it is very important for people abroad uh, to uh, know that once they arrive, they will still have this job for themselves, although someone else does it at the moment. Uh, and so many people are called us and asked, can we come back? And we said, yes, of course you can. There is a place for you. And. Uh, I would like also to mention the relationships with time. On the one hand, we are working with the past, as Alessia mentioned, but on the other hand, this past uh, is sort of horizon. We d and we do not have a clear future. We do not understand how much is ahead of us. We are trying to be ready for anything, but uh, you are um, not sure in anything, but on the other hand, you are ready for everything. And so it's a unique situation because we can um, adapt new skills. And previously we had a week, a few days, a month for something. Now we just do not have time for this. We h just have to do the work very actively, very quickly. And it is part of our everyday life. All the time I'm doing something new. Of course, I'm making a lot of mistakes and then I'm sorry for that, but it's so quick training for us. Also in the context of preserving our collections, it is totally new experience to us. Of course, uh, we spoke about evacuation or some preservation, 
but we have never uh, done that before, so it was a new experience to us. So we had to become mature very quickly, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, Ola wants to add something very quickly. I would like to uh, relate to things that Stas Turin mentioned and Alena Chervonik. This is a role of diaspora, of Ukrainians who are living abroad. And it seems to me that their role is very important. Probably we do not realize how big their role is. And it's not formal role. But if we remind about the role of diaspora after the Second World War, then... Um, we realized that this is a model for our potential diaspora now. Uh, and Alena uh, mentioned it in the context of uh, Kharkiv um, School of Photography. I think that this is a very productive direction of thinking. Yeah, thanks a lot for your remark. Uh, workers, dir directors of museum institutions, they sell, tell us about fragility, and still they show us their st very strong resilience. And uh, we are scattered around the whole Europe, but still everyone is so flexible. Everyone is um, um, adapts, ad adjusts to everything what is going on. It's just unbelievable, and I'm so proud to look at you. Uh, the time is running out, and the discussions are becoming more and more interesting, and I would like to touch upon a few aspects which are very important in functioning of any institution, uh, exhibitions. Uh, it's very important to um, observe how institutions uh, grow when we look at their exhibition activities. Please share with you our, your insights. Uh, after uh, you started exhibitions during uh, in war conditions, I know that you have very interesting ex uh, experience. Uh, some uh, of you remain uh, to, remains to be a focal point for uh, some other uh, institutions, uh, for example, Hanenkiv Museum starts to rethink what is their role, what is their place, and we have never seen in Museum Hanenkiv such things as we have seen uh, there every, a few months ago. So, who will start? Ola. This is our new role. Uh, first of all, I was lucky enough, and it was uh, a quite a big challenge. I became a coordinator uh, of the project. This is a situational project, and uh, all our activity now is uh, quite situational uh, because we just face the challenges and we just uh, try to answer them. Uh, and quite often we had plans before, and uh, we tried to do our best to stick to this plan. But nowadays, we have quite the opposite situation. And so, Yuli Vaganova, after Yermilov, in the Yermilov Center, there was held a uh, um, project uh, by uh, artist Kalashnikov, and uh, Yermilov Center, uh, due to their location in half uh, basement, on half basement level, uh, this place became sort of a shelter for a cultural community. And uh, everyone who is uh, connected to Yermilov Center could uh, be sheltered there. And then Oleg uh, was invited to our empty halls, and our museum has two uh, halls. And in one uh, building, the um, art of Western countries is presented, and in another part, uh, Asian countries' arts is presented. And so our museum became a platform for some new projects. On the one hand, we started thinking if a museum of classical art can become a place 
uh, where contemporary art is going to be exhibited. And uh, can we present their, their uh, creative works of uh, modern artists? And many things were uh, absolutely new to us. Of course, we uh, held uh, different uh, projects um, related to modern artists, but it was in the context of classical art, uh, some reflections or, for example, like Matvi Weisberg exhibition, it's related to society. And um, because he uses classical uh, painting techniques, and uh, so uh, we have not changed our exhibitions uh, in Asian Hall since 2004. This hall became a place for something absolutely new, and it was uh, it was uh, so vibrant to us. We just got used to our exhibits. We got used to our uh, comfort zone and the whole war and everything that is related to it, uh, this war uh, brings us away, far away from this comfort zone. It was so comfortable to sit next, uh, to sit at the table and do our research work. And uh, suddenly I have to uh, talk to a modern artist, Tolet Kalashnikov, uh, and have to use some new skills. I have to use and to achieve some new tasks. Uh, yes. For us, it was offered sort of an experiment, and I'm very grateful for that, because it opened uh, a new um, chapter in our history uh, of museum. And so the hist history of exhibition itself, the history of the museum in war, the texts of Sergei Jadan uh, and uh, other poets who um, were thinking about the war, about Soviet times and post-Soviet times, who reflected on some history. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the objects start thinking in totally different ways. And this is what this exhibition is all about. And so when we prepare this exhibition, when Yule entered the Red Hall, where uh, we had uh, ch Chinese classical objects, she entered the hall and said, it's so interesting that this uh, hall, this hall basically was created for objects like Oleg Kalashnikov does, because it's just specifically for, for him. It looks so nice with his objects. Yes, it's quite an interesting story that uh, we see. So it's uh, wonderful that we see so many interesting things in Hanenkiv Museum. If you allow, I would also speak about Hanenkiv Museum. It came to me uh, during the presentation of new opera, uh, what we talked about with uh, Yulia. So, uh, through this uh, imposed situation, um, it's a huge potential. It's not a place of preservation and knowledge and uh, work of collection, but the making of the culture here and now. In a weird way, this did not happen earlier. You can see it in, in, in a contrast when you're in the center of the situation. Yeah, and at this moment, you just understand it. On the other hand, I'm quite afraid of our self. We're like uh, patting uh, ourselves on the backs too much, I think. Uh, but but yeah, right now we, we do quite a lot uh, of, of work, so we can be proud of ourselves. Yeah, uh, this year we can allow uh, uh, us for this, it, it is a kind of a therapeutic uh, activity. In Arsenal, uh, everything is happening uh, as, as usual. Uh, it's kind of a business as usual. So um, we have been cooperating quite similarly as before the war. But the, the circumstances that we are right now, they form the institution we are right now. And this evolves all the time. It's a process. We are in the process. And we, you can it's quite evident in our two uh, exhibitions. The first one was one of the first in Kyiv to open in um, at the beginning of June. Why did we actually organize it? 
I will reiterate that in April we understood that we are so talking, we're talking so much uh, about this uh, aloud and excessively, much more than it is necessary to um, to understand the the, the, the understand of the um, uh, of the gravity of the situation. It applies not only to Arsenal um, uh, workers, but also everybody who is in Kyiv. Uh, our current um, exhibition um, involves our understanding, kind of exudes our understanding of uh, the current situation and the, and the gravity of it. And it's much more reflective, but so far we don't know how it's going to work as much as we are faced with um, other challenges, new challenges, the lack of uh, um, energy, um, meaning electricity, and uh, unpredictable schedules. When the institution has a lot of um, um responsibilities in f before the the user uh, to provide uh, services on time everything is is in invalid right now uh, it's irre irrelevant irrelevant uh, because uh there is a different rapport uh, between uh, the visitors and the institution uh, the visitors are more in the process and in s they they feel the same, experience the same um, circumstances as we do. Uh, so our schedule is is uh, up to up to change uh, all the time. It's quite fluid depending on 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 the circumstances. Uh, we can take an example of of of, uh, uh, of rain. Like everybody understands that when 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 rain happens, the circumstances changes and uh, it changes in our institution as well. Yes, I agree. What Alessa has said, um, it adds to our uh, our discussion. Physical presence, uh, changing circumstances, fluid, volatile uh, situations. It's it's un uh, unimaginable. Uh, Olenka, uh, please, the floor is yours. What kind of difference is this? Uh, I mean, whether in wartime uh, or there is no, no wartime, the circumstances are volatile and they activate different values. I really liked your phrase about what supports uh, the strength of um, and the resilience of the community. In Dovzhenko Center, we had the value of a huge cultural hub under one roof. Uh, there are plenty of um, art forms, and this is actually the nature of, of, of the cinema. Uh, to, For example, to create a painting or, 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 or a book, you need uh, one person, but to create a film, you need a group of people, uh, at least a person who um, who op who's the op camera operator and, and uh, the actor. But uh, anyway, th there is a whole group behind the project. One of our key uh, ideas behind, uh, behind the project is is uh, to, to present um, uh, cinema in the form of festivals. We organized two of them. One was in, in uh, the summer, organized not at the uh, on site of the center because uh, because of uh, the the safety. So we transferred to a different uh, location, and it's not connected with um, with the war. But we actually. We're concerned with our emotions, and um, the main focus of our activity was uh, diving deep into our being. Uh, 
obviously this was um, imposed by the situation around. So we um, wanted to reinstate uh, and preserve um, the nature of our being, and this is uh, this is the direction uh, that we devoted most of our resources to. Right now, we started processes, uh, including the whole team, into this uh, into this experience. Previously, uh, it was an atomized process. Right now, uh, we include it's more inclusive. So everybody needs to understand. Um, all members of the team needs to understand um, what everybody is doing. Uh, so uh, the whole process uh, of making uh, of the movie, uh, for example, was um, uh, so that it was understood by everybody. Uh, it's actually qu um, quite a young collection, so we uh, cannot uh, uh, contact the uh, the founders, obviously, of uh, of our museum. But we can uh, s talk with uh, the creators. It's really important uh, for for the whole team to understand um, what the projects are made of and uh, who is. Uh, Responsible for what? Uh, this uh, serves as as the basis of uh, of resilience and uh, and strength of uh, our our little uh, com community. So right now, uh, the center is uh, carrying out the mission of uh, point of resilience. We can um, provide shelter to people, uh, provide them heat, uh, electricity, uh, hot water. So that's another uh, uh, another function of the museum. See how, how it's all interesting how uh, Ukrainian cultural uh, institutions um, f are facing uh, more and more uh, challenges and still uh, they can dive deep into their own history and 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 bring the activity on a on a com completely different level. Um, the Dvorenko Center currently is a point of uh, invincibility, um, a point of help for everybody. Olena, could you provide us information on the insight from uh, your international exhibition um, experience? First of all, I would like to summarize a little bit. For me, um, the, the, the main uh, focal point of our discussion is uh, the inno um, innovation of our activity. Obviously, we had some normal um, mode of operation, but uh, we also create a new space for new activities. As I listen to you, I understand, I understand that um, the museum activity in Ukraine, in terms of innovative approaches, what to do with, a, with an empty museum, for example, when uh, you, you have cleaned up uh, broken glass. Well, we can be innovative in a w in the world context. The uh, innovation um, concerns not only museum activity but Ukrainian society in general. Uh, right now, we have been um, forging new connections in our community. Right now, I, I I'm in Oxford, but. Um, and we have um, organized many conferences on Ukraine, and uh, people are um, enamored with Ukraine. They don't know that this that really you can forge uh, society, build a civic society like this, like Ukrainians do, um, forge new connections, uh, create um, uh, and and communicate together. It's really unimaginable for them. And so it doesn't concern uh, only the museum sphere, but. Uh, for example, uh, we're talking about our Ukrainian army and uh, army generals. Um, our army general is uh, probably is most experienced in terms of tactics and, strate and strategy, not in terms of strategy and simulation, but uh, in uh, on the executive level. There is no other uh, uh, person in the world uh, than uh, Zaluzhny. 
our uh, army general uh, right, right now um, we are also on the front line um, creating and forging new connections with uh, with the public I just wanted to add that uh, our history also makes me think of the moment uh, that uh, museums in, in in the USA uh, went through. I worked in uh, in America for a long time, in Philadelphia, and there was a moment when uh, the Black Lives Matters movement um, has been initiated, and we've been talking uh, a lot how discussing the the issue how the how the museum can become a, a sanctuary. For example, from a historical perspective, in, in the Middle Ages, it used to be um, a safe place uh, for the community was, was church. Uh, you could uh, find shelter in, uh, in the church. You could feel safe there. Uh, today, in a secular world, uh, there is a safe place which, for example, a museum can, can, can be. So uh, let's talk about museum as, as a sanctuary. In uh, the Museum of Philadelphia, we were discussing a hypothetical situation in Ukraine. Right now, this sanctuary uh, is actually materialized, not uh, metaphorical. It is a real uh, place of, of shelter. Indeed, uh, museums is, in Ukraine are one of the safest places in a symbolic sense, because in physical, obviously, we cannot uh, know what's going to happen. So um, we can only believe in uh, in our army. But in a symbolic sense, in an emotional one, I would say that the Ukrainian Ukrainian museums right now serve as a as a as a safe place. Thank you, Elena, for uh, this remark. And thank you for summarizing our discussion, because uh, we're just left with a few minutes so I wanted to f uh, pose a final question and, and to uh, sum up our um, our discussion. Let's um, recap our um, experience and insights, uh, everything that you went through and we have been going through within the past nine months of, of the war. Uh, what do you think uh, is most, uh, what is the vital as, as the tools in in the fight, um, and what can be scaled up on uh, over two and a half thousand museums in Ukraine fighting uh, just as you do. Uh, please, uh, just one minute per person. Uh, please summarize um, uh, the summaries, please. My conclusion is that our inner resources are just limitless. Yes, of course, afterwards we will realize what is the line, border of this fragility and how uh, quickly our hair is going to be gray, but we have hair dyes and so it doesn't matter. Yes, so our inner resources are really limitless and in critical conditions we just see how big it is. But I would like to remind about yesterday's advice. It's very important to take care of ourselves uh, within these conditions. And so we have to remember about the point where we have to stop and take care of ourselves and not to be exhausted and burnt out. Although I cannot uh, say such things about our armed forces, they do not have time to retreat, to have some rest. They only can move forward, and it's very good when they uh, at least they can have some time to become uh, defrozen sneakers because they can at least drink some hot tea. So it's all about believing in ourselves. It's uh, about our faith uh, in the fact that we are doing everything right. International partner support is just so incredibly important. I think that I just didn't realize the importance of this support before. These are the people who understand the value of Ukraine 
the world needs us and we need the world. And so it's not worth being self-confident, but we should also be able to accept uh, help, aid, and be grateful for that. Civil society, on the example of our center, I see that we are uh, seen as a sort of a micro-model of things that are going on between Russia and Ukraine. and. Uh, the authorities are sort of um, an example of something that can only destroy. And so we, everyone can be a hero, either locally or globally, and we can protect our values. And some, some people say that if our center does not survive and fall, it means that any democratic initiative can be broken and can be spoiled. So I think that we are at this point now. We know that this is it's not worth fighting against our own state. Of course, it's not good. But we have to provide some solutions and not just uh, passively wait for their solutions. And I think that my colleagues will support me. Ah. Thanks a lot about mentioning another layer of preservation. Yes, self-preservation. Uh, it's uh, the approach of self-care practices that we mentioned yesterday. And we should remember about it. Uh, and I'm sorry that we have not enough time we didn't have enough time to um, speak about this. Yes, and due to our f uh, armed forces, we have this opportunity to have some rest. And therefore, we will protect uh, the Dovzhenko Center in the same way as the armed force forces stand for Ukraine. Uh, you've got us. I have very uh, short remarks. Um, I will start with the uplifting remark. Yes, of course, uh, our armed forces and Olena inspired me. The armed forces for almost everyone who works in um, any institution is sort of an ideal. And you are trying to fit to this ideal. Of course, you cannot match up to this ideal, but we see uh, the armed forces as ideal. And uh, 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 Olena's husband is in the armed forces, and so it's uh, here every day. Uh, it's an um, example of your everyday practice. And so this defrozen sneakers is from real life. And another practical comment. What we have learned uh, in uh, management sense, uh, my rule that I stick to at the moment on is the most important to uh, um, not to be focused not on practical steps, but on the leadership function of the institution. Practical steps should be uh, taken by those who are working with them. The team should be very flexible and have space for maneuvering, but the task of leadership is to be focused on why we are doing this. Thanks, Olesia. Ola, I can uh, totally agree with my previous colleagues. Um, my uncle is also in the armed forces. He is an example for me every day uh, to stay strong. And I would also like to mention foreign colleagues, partners, organizations who support us so strongly. And our museum diaspora works very actively to promote our activities, to promote our museums, so that uh, we receive aid uh, for our artists, for our initiatives. But I would also like to uh, rem remind about, mention about our children, of people who uh, work in our museums. Uh, a lot of uh, my museum biography is related to teaching activities. And for quite a long time, I have worked with children from five to six to seven years old. 
And so it happens so that part of my work and happened due to the lack of personnel. Again, I uh, had to do this teaching work, and therefore these meetings with children who are so patriotic, so uh, emotional, and each of them have their uh, inner story because most of um, a lot of them are internally replaced children, so their stories inspire me and gives me energy to move forward. Thanks a lot. I would also like to uh, sum up. Uh, to sum up, uh, on the 24th of February the war starts, uh, and uh, on the same uh, we, uh, the same week in Oxford, uh, there were a lot of discussion panels in Oxford. What happened and why uh, nobody was ready? Of course, there are a number of people who are dealing with uh, in Oxford who are dealing with uh, regions, and they have many many politologists. Um, and for example, we had an ex-head of um, British intelligence who visited us, and all these people uh, told us that in three days there will be no Ukraine, in five days there will be uh, no Kiev, and so on and so on. Of course, of course nothing uh, of these things uh, happened. And uh, a few days ago, we had another conference, and a lot of Ukrainian researchers were invited to this conference, uh, some of them were connected online, some of them uh, arrived uh, physically, and uh, so they started discussing what happened, why did Ukraine survive, and these politologists that um, prophesied that we are going to fall down, they uh, said that we confess that we uh, s looked at politicians, at some state institutions, public institutions, but we did not pay attention to civil society. Ukraine stood and remained strong due to civil society, due to Ukrainian people, ordinary people, and in their Western context, uh, people are just so impressed by this because it is sort of uh, implementation of a sense of democracy because we can say that we, Ukrainian people, we have sustained this, uh, we have preserved this country. It's not due to politicians. And therefore, of course, probably, we have always had this uh, so, uh, civil society. But in 2013, uh, 14, uh, we in isolation, in isolation project, uh, we had to leave because what can we, uh, we, what could we do? Fifteen people against uh, the whole squad, uh, and so uh, after that, for eight years, our civil society have been formed, and I am deeply uh, convinced that it happened so because. We had so many cultural events, and uh, these events, they embedded all together our society. And we had so many festivals during uh, the last eight years. We had so many visual um, d demonstration exhibitions. I remember when we started doing res residencies in isolation, nobody heard about this word, uh, but nowadays, any territorial community, uh, they all have their cultural hubs, uh, and it has changed throughout uh, throughout these uh, last eight years. So now, when we are uh, when we talking about rebuilding Ukraine, renovating Ukraine, uh, previously uh, people uh, said that first we have to rebuild energy sector, but these people do not understand that culture is a primary aspect of national security, of national safety, uh, of safety of people. This is not an additional function. This is a primary function. Uh, and so we have to think over hierarchy. Uh, it should be done simultaneously, because without culture, there is no Ukrainian nation. And then, uh, without Ukrainian culture, we won't be resilient. Thanks a lot for this wonderful remark. I am 
totally agree with you, and we all think that culture is a transformational um, factor, and it is a guarantee of national security. Thanks a lot uh, to all of you, dear friends. And now it's time for questions from our audience. And I would like to use this occasion to thank to each one of you for your physical presence uh, in your institutions, for your physical presence here today. To thank uh, you for what you're doing, because people who are working nowadays in public institutions, they're real heroes. And I do not exaggerate. I would like to thank for your vision, for your bravery, because you are preserving the things that you are forced to preserve, and you are doing so many more tasks than before, and you are driving forces uh, of changes, and you stick to good government governance practices, and we need it so much. Sometimes your work may be overlooked, but we do value and appreciate your work. Thanks a lot. And I would like to, uh, to bring more light to the audience. Please um, applause us to our uh, speakers. Thanks a lot. Please bring more light on the audience. I would like to uh, give mic to the audience. If you have questions, raise your hand. I have my first question. I have a mic, so I would like to ask our conference, our, um, the aim of our uh, conference is also to establish ties, connections. Uh, I would like to ask, do you see an opportunity of cooperation among uh, public institutions and uh, non-governmental institutions? Please share what can be done so that this cooperation would be more frequent and more smooth than at the moment. Who would be uh, eager to answer this question? Thank you. First, we've all been working um, in community organizations. I thought that we don't have a lot of exhibitions where Dovzhenko um, Center uh, takes part in. Uh, Alexander Talux from Dovzhenko Center um, on the basis of uh, film seminar, made great work. But what to do more, it's really hard to, to say. We uh, lack strength, uh, not enough people. One of the conclusions of this, wor uh, of this year is why, um, you why is Ukrainian institutions were not included in international context. There are many reasons. One of them is we are understaffed. Uh, yeah, there is a l lack of people. Uh, in Arsenal, we need more, um, f uh, 50 people more uh, to, uh, to be able to carry out all the activities. So we, we do what we can. We ju do just a part. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, can I uh, rephrase the question, uh, be more specific? Uh, what is uh, w what other examples of uh, cooperation did you have? I wanted to ask uh, the um, uh, the question of of cooperation between the institution. You said that uh, so you you cooperate a lot, but uh, what in effect does this um, cooperation looks like? Um, for example, uh, curatorships, um, these projects are not led by our employees, but curators. Uh, also, um, projects based on uh, inviting one author to Arsenal and also lending, uh, so, sorry, borrowing um, works. It all depends on uh, practitioners. Um, our education uh, department has been working a lot with uh, therapeutic a lot of therapeutic organizations um, to help children. 
there is a lot of workshops organized together with uh, educational practitioners and organizations specializing in spe uh, psychological support. Excuse me, um, what is, uh, do, do you have, uh, <coughs> do, you, do you have a um, cooperation w w with other organizations? Uh, is there any support from the side? I believe you should really speak after our discussion to, to, to explain the details. But what do you mean of our institutions? Um, I mean, uh, the uh, the cooperation of all uh, all sectors um, face extreme challenges. So, can we cooperate to uh, develop cult culture together? Uh, without dialogue, it's really difficult to. Uh, move forward. Uh, for example, Dovzhenko Center uh, cooperating uh, with um, artists, curators. Uh, we pay fee, uh, fees to everybody. So government institutions have been cooperating with uh, artists. And we've also been developing this um, uh, community. Right now, the center is in a situation that we do not have funds for our activity. So we are supported, for example, by a uh, charity fund, uh, that um, has been um, has been working with us, supporting uh, Ukrainian um, community, so uh, Pablo helped us um, organize uh, co-working, he, he supplied us with furniture and other resources. Such um, offers are, are, are open, uh, but there are not enough hands to, to deal with them. Uh, thank you for this improvised dialogue. Uh, maybe the last question, I could see uh, the hand ra uh, being raised in, in, in uh, Um, then I'm not uh, giving the question because there is a lack of time. Okay, there is another question. You're, st you're talking about culture and uh, how our civil society is strong under the pressure, but I wanted to ask you, do you see that this strength is, is a different strength uh, than Russians have or Americans have, can culture be deeply embedded in, in, in the society? Is this the strength um, that could also fight Russia in, in the war? Thank you. Who would like to, uh, to answer this question? Uh, Olena Czerwonek? It's a really difficult uh, question. We must understand what really culture is. Uh, very often we're speaking about culture uh, as an amorphic concept. We have something like uh, practices of s symbolism. Uh, for example, literature, music, these practices of uh, symbolizing the world, it cannot be turned off and on. And uh, this is what makes us human. As, pr as a principle, and this is what we experience right now. People who were, uh, uh, for example, hiding in, in bomb shelters in Bucha without f uh, food and, and, and water, they, would st they were still uh, making paintings on the walls. This is our uh, core function, sim um, creating symbolism, expressing symbolism, uh, expressing symbols. Without this, we cannot exist. So maybe this culture sometimes uh, is not expressed, not active, but 
but this is a question of uh, of um, awareness and uh, the awareness of civic society to analyze yourself. I think we all can agree that there is a huge difference how the Ukrainian um, society understands itself and Russian uh, society does not do it. I, I think Russians have, uh, they, they, they behave like, um, they pretend uh, the war is not happening. They, uh, and, and it seems like uh, they, they believe that Russian, uh, that um, uh, Putin, uh, is not a representative of of, of uh, Russian society, but I don't think this this uh, this bears any rev uh, relevance. So I believe there is no sense to to compare our societies, as there are stark differences in between them. Uh, but thanks to our civic uh, society and uh, civic um, awareness that we have built uh, within the past eight years of the war, uh, so since 2013. There is uh, a change. Uh, a change happened. It, it is difficult to quantify, however. Um, but maybe before the war, uh, this uh, civic society has not been as um, as popular, as 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 widespread as now. We consolidated it uh, as well, thanks to our uh, cultural practices and museums. Thank you very much, Olena. I couldn't find uh, a better final code for our discussion. Uh, uh, and unless I wanted to add something uh, really quickly, I wanted to th uh, give thanks to, to Nastya that you have been helping us to uh, keep the front alive. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Uh, it was my honor to m be a moderator of today's uh, discussion. I can see some uh, hands in the air, but uh, unfortunately we, we cannot uh, withhold our discussion. Uh, but if you have some questions, please ask them in an informal um, way to, to, to the speakers and we'll continue discussion as needs be. Thank you very much uh, for the participants for really fantastic discussions, uh, very insightf insightful ones and the uh, uh, people in the audience uh, for your um, insights as well. Thank you very much.